Roughly 250 years ago, humans started toying with the idea of robotic voices, and eventually they created the world's first artificial voice. A Russian professor by the name of Christian Kratzenstein built a machine consisting of a number of reeds that vibrated similarly to the human vocal tract. Years later, in 1791, an inventor named Wolfgang von Kempelen iterated on the original design to create an even better voice machine. The machine had bellows for airflow, reeds to simulate vocal cords, a tube for the larynx and vocal path, and even two nostrils and a tongue and lips. With all of this put together, Kempelen was able to manipulate the shape of the tube, lips, and tongue to create consonants and vowels. Devices like this, first mimicking the ways that humans spoke, would continue to be iterated on for the next 100 years until in the 1930s, Homer Dudley of Bell Labs created the best early speaking machine. Named the Voter for Voice Operating Demonstrator, the machine was much more complicated than these early designs. It transformed the bellows and reed system from early machines with mechanical connections that allowed an operator to play the machine like a piano. In 1939, the Voter machine was first unveiled at the New York World Fair to the amazement of the audience. The New York Times described the voice as akin to to an alien speaking underwater. The voice became the origin of what people began to expect from machine voices, and its sound was solidified in history through a wealth of science fiction media. The machine worked completely through the control of an operator, and it could create two basic sounds, a buzzing or a hissing. The operator would utilize the buzzing sound for vowel and nasal sounds, while the hissing was utilized for consonants. These initial sounds were created by the operator using a wrist bar, which was then pushed through several filters that were selected using the keys on the operator's keyboard. Sounds for the letters like P, D, J, or even CH were created using additional filters as they didn't fit into the buzzing or hissing categories. The operator was even able to combine words into sentences by finally manipulating the keys. The original machine operator was a woman by the name of Helen Harper at the World's Fair, who said this about operating the machine. In producing the word concentration on the voter, I have to form 13 different sounds in succession and make five up and down movements of the wrist bar and vary the position of the foot pedal from three to five times, according to what expression I want the voter to give a word. And of course, all of this must be done with exactly the correct timing. It reportedly took Harper a full year of practice to learn to operate the machine with such high precision. 300 women went through training to become operators, but by the end, only 30 were able to master it. Skilled operators were so good at manipulating the machine that they could make it speak any language and even make animal sounds. Simplified, the voter was a mechanical instrument that allowed operators to mimic human speech. This mechanical machine soon turned electrical as the years went by and now we're left with devices that sound nearly exactly like human beings. 